Yeah, okay, of guys, course. I'm going to go yeah. live. Okay. I'll say hi, Thomas. We're live. Okay. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Javi. And hi, everyone who's there. Um, welcome to the most hair-breaking demo ever. Um, do you want to start sharing your screen, Thomas? Yes, I will do that, yes. <clears throat> cool. Can you see my screen? Yes. Cool, Javi, so you do want to start? Yes, let's go. Uh, yeah, as I'm saying, we are going to do a hair-breaking demo today. Um, the thing we're going to try, we'll, we'll do it with roles. So we are going to play with the data scientist role and the data engineer role. I'm Javier Blanco. I'm senior data scientist at Quix, and I've worked before in Orange in Spain as a data scientist, um, previously in Jaguar Land Rover in the UK. So I'll be doing the role of a data scientist. Uh, I'm Tomas, and I'm CTO and co-founder at Quix, and previously I worked in fleet management, and then uh, went to McLaren, where we were trying to, we were trying to get the data from F1 cars to the cloud, and um, enable uh, engineers, mechanical engineers, and ML engineers to, to work on top of data. And today, I will be a data engineer uh, in this, <laughs> in this um, role play. Cool. So what is the goal of, of this demo? Well, it's to build a uh, application on top of IoT data. So we have here an IoT device, which is actually just a phone with an app that uh, sending various sensors like um, GeForce, heart rate through the Bluetooth connected to my strap, and temperature, battery information, etc. Um, and we're going to try to build um, application that would uh, deliver some insight into, into IoT data to the customer, to the user, or to the company. And um, we're going to try to do it a bit differently than uh, normally, uh, well, than the old batch database centric uh, architecture would do. So we're going to try to use Python, Kafka, and Kubernetes to build such a pipeline and such a product. And um, we're going to bring a Microsoft approach to data problems and um, use Python to, to process data, to clean data, to build an insight into data, and to create a dashboard and actually send the, 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 the added value back to the customer. Now, let's start ingesting data first then. So uh, me and Javi are connected. So if we go to our topic where we're sending data to explore, now we can see that we have Thomas and Javi live. And uh, if I check my heart rate, um, that's now 94, which is by the way quite low for me. Uh, don't worry. And um, you can check things like GeForce, um, there we are. So if I shake with the device, it will it will um, send some GeForce data. Cool. So now we we connect the device to a, a WebSocket gateway, and we have data in the cloud. And uh, what we want to do now is actually build the product. Normally, what people do here uh, when they got this working is to sync it to warehouse or database. I mean, we can do that as well. And it is a good idea for certain use cases and definitely it's not a wrong thing to do. So we can get a Snowflake connector here and um, uh, I'm just gonna get the connection string here. So we're gonna get the phone data and Um, deploy the app. Um, so 
we are now basically persisting all the data being streamed for all devices into warehouse. And um, that's that means that we can do analytics, we can do all the best stuff we have. But what we don't really want to do is now use the Snowflake to process our data and build the product on top of that. Because we would basically put this big bottleneck in the middle of our architecture and spend a lot of money and resources on leveraging the database to work with the data. And we're going to be quite limited by a query language that we have in the Snowflake. We are limited to tabular structure. And um, it's not really great for anything real time and uh, it's not really scalable. So what we're going to do instead is that rather than connecting to Snowflake and build transformation there, we're going to connect to the topic directly in memory. That's what we call pop and sub. So we're going to subscribe for data from the phone and in memory, create cleaning transformation. We're going to inherit a new call, new feature here, which is the first example. And we're gonna send the output to different topic. That's the all we're gonna do in that microservice. So let's let's do exactly that. So I'm gonna go so here Thomas, to transformation. You, you are going to build a transformation right based on the sensors data. Um, yes. What you're saying is that we don't need to store that sensor data, then pick it from another place, then transform it and push it somewhere else. We are gonna do it on the go with the data we, we have. Exactly. The latest one we have, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna stop the Snowflake sync now, just so we get, we are clear here. Snowflake now is not what's gonna help us to build this. We are gonna use Kafka Broker and pop and sub pattern to actually build this application. So if I now create a new microservice here, I'm gonna use a template for transformation. And I'm going to listen to phone data input, which is what we saw in the graph. And I'm going to output it to GeForce Total. And as the name might suggest, um, actually, sorry, I'm going to do it again and give it a better name. So it's going to be GeForce Total. And I'm going to save this project. So now we get the new microservice, which is Pretty cool. We have this Python function. We can now edit and do the actual transformation. And, and let's do that. So first, first of all here, we're going to read the data from, from a broker into Python. And because we want to use the data frame, I'm just going to do following line. And what I'm getting here uh, now is um, data being deserialized and converted to data frame for me. So I have to, but now I can use Python and it's, it's a word of third party libraries to do any magic here I want really. But today for the first example, let's go, let's be, let's go a bit easy here. So I'm, I'm just gonna check that the GeForce, um, GeForce parameter is here. And, and then if that's the case, sorry. If that's the case, I'm going to create a new column that is um, called GeForce total. What that's going to be is just an absolute um, GeForce applied to the device from all dimensions and in a one value. It's quite useful to detect things like a device is being manipulated or being moved because normally you have a negative and positive numbers. So it might be difficult to work with. And then uh, I'm just Thomas, going- Thomas, could you zoom in the screen a little bit? Yes. Uh, is it better now? Yes, yes, thank you. Cool. So um, then I'm just gonna do a DF apply and this is just a normal Python. So um, yeah. And because we need absolute value here. Um, and I'm just gonna edit. Like that. Um, now it's a bit 
too much zoom. <laughs> I'll put it back for them. Cool, and it is axis one. Yeah, so you can already see why this is actually better than a SQL query. I get full IDE support and runtime checking, type checking. And uh, if there's something wrong in my code, it's much easier to find where it is. And I'm, I'm using an open source Python libraries so I can actually uh, look what's happening. Uh, it's not a black box for me. And then I'm just gonna print it, what I have done, and write it to output. So, um, that's it. So, Thomas, what you are doing here in this line 25 is writing to an output topic, right? You, you've you read uh, from an input topic, uh, now we have some data, you've transformed it in line 22, and now in line 25, we are outputting to, a, to another topic, right? Exactly. So, I have, I have added a column yeah. to that data frame that I have now in memory. And because I have changed it, I want to output it so I can use it elsewhere. I basically with this line to, on 25, I just send it to output topic. So oh. that's basically a one-on-one -on -one pop and sub uh, example. Read, do a transformation and write another topic. So let's give it a try. If... Hello. Nice, it's moving, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. So this, this is now going to catch up with the leading edge. So this is how Kafka works. And this is really why we, we're doing this. So if you would build API rather than use Kafka, if, if the API is not available, data getting lost. But here, Kafka holds that temporary queue for us. So I was sending this data for, let's say, 15 minutes now without having this transformation deployed. But I'm not going to lose a single line of single row of data. Everything's going to be processed from the start. And if I have a downtime or, um, and then now we can see it slow down because now we process all the buffer and so, now we are on the leading yeah. edge. Yeah, this is, this is data coming in now, right? Yeah, you are yes. moving and the numbers are going up. And yes. So we are, we are running this in this ID. I, I guess now you are going to tell us how to take this through production or not yet. Yes, so I think it's a let, let's do that. Uh, so, um, is it still readable with this zoom right now? Is it fine? Yes, it is fine for me. Yeah, cool. So, now I'm gonna stop this, and because I like the code, it's working, I'm gonna create a version V1. So if you go to history, you can see my changes here in a, on a master branch, and I tag the last one. So then I can go to deploy, and I'm just going to deploy this to Kubernetes. Uh, I think I can give it like one core. I mean, it's unnecessary, but yeah, one core. And but before I do that, you see this replica here? This is very important. This is how, why this is really uh, a scalable, and resilient and robust solution to such a problem. Um, because the way how this works and how Kafka and Kubernetes works together really well is that Kafka have a system of partitions and that's the way how you can basically parallelize your processing and you can add and scale your processing horizontally. So more partition, if, if, you, have, if you have, let's say 16 partitions, you can have four instances of your service and each would take four partitions and process a quarter of a, of a data. And this is really cool because then if one of the services in a group get restarted or for example, you're updating to the new version, um, the others would take the load and you don't have any downtime. And this is how uh, you can build a resilient scalable pipelines uh, with a microservice approach on top of Kafka and Kubernetes. So this is now working, running, amazing. We see input data, output data, and that's pretty cool. Um, so let's 
let's build a bit so, something a bit more complicated, although just a little. Um, so th this was stateless processing. We don't have any state here, and um, and uh, it's just one row is get co converted to another row. But uh, we want to track how much movement had been done in a session, in a whole session. So let's build a materialized in-memory view um, on top of this data. So, so Thomas, I guess another way to explain the status is um, the state before uh, we didn't have anything more than the incoming data that we were receiving, right? So you, yeah. you were getting sensor data in and you, you only needed that for your transformation, but now for your transformation, you are going to need some historic data or some uh, persisted or accumulated data, not just the latest pieces of information that you are getting, right? Yeah, okay. exactly. So, so how are you going to do it? So what we're going, what we're going to do now is basically accumulate G4 total column uh, from the start, and we just want to do a sum. But if we start our service in the middle, we would lose that accumulated value. So we have to make sure that if we do that, we're not going to start from zero, but from accumulated value. And that's where we need to use state. So here, I'm going to just call this in memory view, and I will output it to GView. Cool. So um, this is a, just a simple example how how to do such a thing. I'm going to have to change some code here to make it work with our data. But before we go there, um, there is a line 26 where we setting the state, we setting the accumulated uh, view. Uh, and, and there is a background um, process that's basically working with the Kafka to make sure that we persist the state to the disk only when a checkpoint happens uh, in a Kafka. Just to explain what checkpoint is, it, the way how this works is that when you're consuming data from Kafka, every 10 or 20 seconds, the consumer tell, talking with the Kafka and they and they they talking with each other, and they Kafka knows what the consumer already consumed, and and every 10 or 20 seconds they basically just do a checkpoint. This consumer have consumed up to this point. And when this happens, we persist the state. So when then you get restarted, because you're going to start from that point, we load the state for exactly the moment when it was checkpointed. By that, you don't get a, a corruption in your state and your accumulated value, and you're not losing any data. But also what you get, and this is really important, you're reducing your IO operations to a 10 or 20 seconds intervals rather than doing this every time you get a new volume. That's why, unlike, for example, materialized views, this is really great for a fre frequent queries, but also frequent updates. So it's like a both words, both advantages from both words coming into one place. So um, let's do that. Um, so I'm gonna... Thomas, yeah, just to clear that up, uh, uh, um, to... so if we were persisting Every time we had new data, we were basically be working with a database pretty much. Yes. Uh, also, so that's a slow. Um, we we are wasting some resources we don't we don't want. However, um, because we do it with the Kafka commits, it's perfect timing. Uh, it's only twenty seconds interval. Uh, yeah, I I I, I get it. Uh, it. It's it's basically reducing how often we have to touch the disk. And that's why this makes the in-memory view so performant. Most of the time we work just in memory. And if something happens, recovery is again um, uh, easy and, and we don't get any corruption in the data. Makes sense. So if I try now to write to, to run it, um, Let's see if that's gonna work. Yeah, so you see that we have nice. two, write, two writers now. Um, yeah. And data being accumulated, so that works quite nice. Um, again, 
Uh, I'm going to show you this data a bit more in the next step. So let's not get bogged down on this right now, but um, I'm just going to stop this and again do the same, just create a V1 and deploy to Kubernetes. So what we have done already is two microservices um, in a pipeline. Um, and we're going to just add the third one. But this time, because this is state for processing, I'm just going to have to give it a one gigabyte of persistent volume in Kubernetes. So it has a place where to put that state uh, every 10 or 20 seconds. Cool. So that's working now. And if we go here, we see that the pipeline is, is there. And this is being built into Docker and deployed to Kubernetes. So it would be nice to talk about how we can actually bring this to the customer app or web page or external system. So we can actually end this pipeline in, a, in the same device that it came from. Or we can basically print or visualize this in a web application without touching the database. So it could be real time, which is going to be, but also it doesn't uh, put a pressure on the database. So database can actually be used for what it's meant to be, and that's querying data for post analysis. So now if I add new here, oh, we're going to use another library item, which is called real time dashboard. Now, this is super simple dash plotly example where you can build in Python web pages and plot data. And it's quite easy to use, actually. Um, so yeah, GView. Um, and here, I'm going to transform this sorry, group by writer. So we have one, one row per the person. And yeah, um, just to show you when it's spinning up, this is how you do this. Uh, you have like a HTML um, style uh, composition here. And we're going to use just a simple table visualization of Panda data frame. But you can replace that with um, graphs, uh, linear graphs, waveforms. Scatter plots, etc. Map, for example, it's just a nice way how to visualize data uh, real time. So this is being installed uh, because there's more libraries now. Uh, it's taking a bit more time. Um, uh, Thomas, while we are waiting that minute, uh, do you mind showing us again the pipeline view so we see all the components you build and what you're building? Yeah. So. Um, we uh, start, well, I mean in, in the slides, even if you want. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we created a view here, as you see here. And now we're going to display the dashboard. So we have three microservices working in a pipeline coming from the phone. And uh, now we're going to visualize it in the dashboard. So your D forces come from the phone. Then in D total, you do the first transformation you, you build where you, you create this uh, accumulated GeForces um, column that is sent to the next topic, the G total view. And then in the in-memory view, you create the, um, the what you have just shown us uh, with the state. And now you are just going to visualize that in a dashboard, right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. cool. So. Um... If I go back to the project, um, just before I start, here's the libraries you need. So you need um, a dash, webzoom, and this is just for styling, and obviously request. Um, this is library item, so it's uh, in, a, in a public GitHub, uh, on our public GitHub, so you can look at the code and uh, replicate it by yourself. So if I press now run uh, here, Amazing, it's working. And if I press this little button, we have real-time dashboard. So this is now accumulating how many Gs pretty nice. <laughs> we, we, have, uh, we, have, um, we have done in a- Basically, since the beginning of the talk, right? Yes, yes, since the beginning. So um, this was quite simple. 
and we didn't really want it to um, start with something complicated because to explain the concept, um, uh, we, we, we did this silly, simple pipeline. But what, how we can make something actual uh, that, that, that has some value? How we can enable a domain expert or SME or data scientist to, um, to build insight into data and, and, and put it back to the product. So for that, uh, I would, I would uh, stop my screen share and Javi, can you take a control of screen share and actually sure. build something more interesting? <laughs> Will do. Um, okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, good. So this is where you left it, right, Thomas? Um, yes. Basically, you've created all these pipelines that we have just explained. Um, what I'm going to try to do as a data scientist is to add some value to, to that data. Um, what I'm going to do today is to calculate the calories that we are burning. So now that we have your heart rate information, I'm gonna to try to calculate how many calories you're burning over there, Thomas. And I'm not a subject matter expert in calorie burning or anything, but uh, I did some little research and apparently there are these two ways to burn calories. Uh, one is what you are doing right now. So just keeping alive. <laughs> without much movement, that's your base metabolic rate. Um, it is expensive uh, in terms of energy expenditure because, well, you, to keep alive, you have to keep your temperature, you have to keep your heart beating, uh, your brain and nerves have to be functioning and connecting, your blood is circulating, there are lots of things going on. And apparently it is unintuitively big the amount of energy we spend just keeping alive compared to moving. So I have there some formula uh, that I found in a paper um, to tell us our base metabolic rate. I could calculate that uh, with our data because uh, you can tell me your weight, your height and your age and, and we could work with that. But I'm gonna go straight with moving burning even when you are not moving that much. Um, because this formula, as you see there, really depends on their heart rate. You also need your VO max, but you will see that we can calculate that with your heart rate when you are sit like now. We need your weight, your age, yeah, all stuff that we need, that we have, including the heart rate that we have in real time. So I'm gonna take your, your pylon view and using the phone data, that included the G-forces. I'm gonna do now the transformation for the uh, calories. I'm not going to be using the, the accelerations, of course, but I'm going to be using from that topic is the hair rate. So let's go to Quicks and let's build that new service that is going to be listening to the phone data, picking the hair rate and doing some transformation. And the first thing that I have to do is an interpolation. And this has a lot to do with the state that you have just explained, Thomas. So if this wasn't a streaming, if we weren't playing with a data in real time, um, if we were doing batch, this will be like our table looks like, right? You have some timestamp, some head rate. And if I want to calculate the average head rate in, in a time period, what I could do is to, to calculate the time delta, the, the period between T2 and T1, I will do a window operation, T2 minus T1, I will keep going like that. For the average, it will be pretty much the same. Uh, so it's quite a straightforward when we have the whole bunch of data. But obviously we also have the disadvantages of working with batch, like you see here, Thomas, we will only be able to calculate average hair rate for T2 when we are ready in T4, or same in another way. With batch, you insert some delay because you are not reacting to T2 in T2. You are reacting to T2 in T4 or whenever you access in that data. So we want to do that in a streaming. We do it when we are getting one piece of information 
at a time. Uh, what I'm going to be using is a library item in Quicks that uses the state memory you have just explained to keep the amount of information that we need for that calculation. So what you see in orange is what I'm going to be saving in, in my um, memory state. I'll be saving the last timestamp information so that I can calculate the time delta and average hair rate. Mm -hmm. So I will say T1 and 65 when I'm in T2. Uh, then I don't need it anymore. So when I'm in T3, I will just keep T2 and 71 and so on. So this is a very efficient way in terms of memory and computing resources to do this calculation. And without further ado, let's, let's go to the library and let's do that. Well, what I have here is the project that you have just started. We have your transformations over there. Um, so, uh, Javi, yeah. can, you maybe, uh, can you maybe show how you would look at the data, uh, considering that you don't have no, any knowledge of um, data being streamed right now? How you would sure. analyze that first? That's a good point. That's a good point. So I could come to one of your deployments like that one. Right, um, we have here this beautiful tab that is going to come very handy for what you are asking. So yeah, let's pretend I haven't seen this data before. The first thing that I would want to do is check at the actual format uh, from phone data. So I'm going to select here input phone data. Good. This is live as you see is updating. So I'm going to select one of those. <coughs> and there you are. I can see. Uh, that your hit rate comes as we see there. So the column value is hit rate with H and R as capital. And I get the value as, a, as a, an integer, it seems. So it's all good. This is all I needed to know. That's good. And can you, can you maybe show uh, what you would do in terms of analysis of the history data? Like, uh, when oh, we, yes. When we have when we have been doing this in a <laughs> in a life environment, that's a, more stressy. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. So let's let's say that um, I want to check. Um, well, I'm gonna check our historic data in a second, right, Thomas? After I do the transformation. So yeah, let me do the transformation first, and I'll. Uh, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna compare my history hair rate with yours. Let's see if it's through that. Okay. The, yeah, your hair is higher. Cool. So I'll create then the library item that I was talking about. It's called interpolation. I can come over here. And you see in the documentation, it tells us something very similar to what I was showing in the slides. So in T1 and T2, we have a new parameter data. And this library item is getting us both the uh, interpolated parameter over there, and also the delta time in seconds, so T2 minus T1. This is exactly what I want. Uh, I just copied and pasted the Hebraic syntax. We, we just saw it earlier. Uh, now I have to be listening to phone data. That's the topic where the phone is outputting its data. So that will be my input. And as for an output, I'm going to be outputting to phone data here. Good. And this is going to be interpolation, yeah. And I don't need to do any change in this code, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy the service without having to touch any line of code. Let's wait and see that it works. Thomas, you are the data engineer in the room. Tell us what is going on behind the scenes. So um, this library that uh, you guys see here, be using with Javi, it's an open source uh, repository in GitHub with all the services that are available to being forked or being PR'd uh, with the improvements. And uh, we try to fill it with some services that help you. And sometimes you can save it as a project and do some changes, but sometimes you don't need to really. And that's this case. And you just deploy it as a container in Kubernetes without any change. And if you do that, uh, like Hubbard did, it's actually quite quick because it doesn't have to be built again. So yeah, um, it seems that it works. Nice. Well, yeah, I'm going to check that it's working with the data view that we were seeing before. This is the input data from my 
recently created interpolation hair rate service. Uh, you see the format as we, we saw it earlier, obviously, we, we haven't changed anything in there. And now let's see what the interpolation hair rate service is doing. So I'm going to select the output of that. Uh, yes, nice. So you see, we have the original hair rate, we have the delta time in seconds. So this is the seconds between this point of data and the previous one. And this is the average between those two. So you, you stayed at 94, it seems to us, for that one. And um, you see it moves as we pick different timestamps. So this seems working. So that is good. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a look at our historic hair rate, OK? So um, we can do that here in the persistent streams. Uh, a persistent stream is basically a database attached to, to a topic so that every piece of information that goes through that topic, we are also saving it in a database. We use InfluxDB, which is especially efficient for this type of um, time series data. So I can access that through here, Persister Streams. I'm going to select, uh, I guess this is yours, right, Thomas? Yes, that's uh, um, right now, yeah. Going to open that one. And I'm going to select uh, your hair rate. As you see, I could check your phone. Uh, I could check how your phone is. Well, your phone is pretty charged, 95%. But it's going down a bit. <laughs> Good. And then I could check your hit rate. Let's see. Good. So maybe you were a little bit nervous when we started uh, <laughs> in the, band, the, the live video. But yeah, you seem pretty stable. And because I'm a data scientist and I may want to extract some um, distributions of this data. Uh, I'm going to export it. As you see, I could also check the table view, but what I'm going to do now is go to the code and copy that and export it to a notebook of mine. I have this notebook over here. You see that cell is empty. I'm not pasting the query it, I just copied. Is it, yeah. is it fair to say, Javi, that this is the first thing you would normally do to look at the data to understand yeah. them? I mean, I would probably have an initial view over here, a visual inspection. I will have a look at the magnitudes. But yeah, probably after that, I will want to get some statistics out, out of that distribution. So I will come over here and do some, some things. Yeah. So that's your data, Thomas. Um, I have over here already prepared some of my data. So we should be able to compare both. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm going to bring an identifier uh, so that we can compare which is which. So I'm going to replace that with this. Yeah, so now it is pretty much the same, but as you will see, not only I have your timestamp and hair rate, also the stream ID. So there is a Thomas Samsung, so we know it's you. Um, for mines, you see says, Javi, show me something. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to append both pieces of data. And now over here, I'm just converting the timestamp to something Python understands, just for the graphs to look prettier. And I'm sorting the data chronologically over there. So something very simple. So my data is first now, because this is from last week. And your data comes at the end. And over here, I'm doing straight away a histogram. So we can see the distributions of, of the different populations. And yeah, Thomas, your carrot is much higher than mine. Much, <laughs> much higher. Are you OK? <laughs> no, that's, that's, this is normal for me. <laughs> OK. Um, I could also check the a continuous probability distribution, which will tell us the same story. Um, this is me coding, this is me coding, and uh, this is you now. 
I could also extract some other values like you see there, my mean, your mean, mean and max. Cool. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate the calories as we were saying, and I'm gonna use that information to calculate the calories. So now that I have created that interpolation that tells me the average head rate per uh, time delta, I should be able to calculate the calories spent in each of those time deltas, right? Yeah, so, so just, just, just we have a question here on the chat. Yeah. Um, we, we are not gonna use G-force uh, for, the, for the calories calculation. It was just a more simple start to the, to the demo, but now we're, not, exactly. we're gonna stop using G-force and start using heart rate. Yes, exactly, exactly. So um, I'm going to come back to this pipeline view because I always find it very intuitive. Um, you see there, we are sending phone data. Some of that phone data is key forces. Some of that is head rate, which is what we are using here in the interpolation head rate and what we will use in the, um, in the calories calculation. So, I will add a new transformation there that is going to be listening to the output of um, the interpolation head rate. Uh, when I click there, it takes me to the library um, where some pieces of code are pre-built for me. Um, just so you see that I'm building this from scratch, I'm going to select Python transformation and something simple like, yeah, that one, hello world transformation. And this is going to be my calories calculator. And um, as for input, I'm going to have phone data here. Output, I'm going to output this in this new topic, phone data here, here, calories. So far, I'm just telling it where to listen from and where to output the data to. And now what transformation I do depends on me, depends on what I write in here. So this is uh, the data that I'm getting from the input topic. And this over here is what I'm outputting to the output topic. So whatever I do in between is where my transformation will happen. Good. So my transformation, uh, all it's going to be is I'm going to apply the formula that we saw in the slides, this formula over here from, from those folks. Um, I don't want to be copying and pasting that code, so I have it already prepared in here. But we will see in a second. It's really simple. Good. Um, that's the formula we were just talking about. The only thing is the formula calculates the calories per minute. So I'm doing an extra transformation to tell us the calories per the time the delta that we are passing the function. Good, so now I'm gonna copy and paste the code that I need in here and we'll go line by line seeing what we are doing. Good, good, good. There we are. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm taking the data coming from the topic in and I'm converting that to a pandas data frame because well, I'm a data scientist and I'm comfortable with that format. And now I'm calling the calculating calories function that I just copied and paste. That function needs from me the average head rate, head rate over a time delta and some other Value. So the average head rate uh, will be the interpolated head rate that is coming from the input in data. And the time delta will be, again, the delta time in seconds that is coming from there. Now, for the VO2 max, we could calculate yours, Thomas. Um, it is something that you can do online. So. By what we saw earlier, your minimum um, head rate is 79. Uh, how old are you, Thomas? 30, 31. Okay, good. No, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, 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 that I think that is. <laughs> okay. And now I need uh, 79 is over 60 seconds. So 
uh, 79 over 3. I'm using my phone calculator. It's 26 and the... So that is your view max, apparently. So I'm going to come here, paste that into there. Now, Thomas, do you want to tell us this? <laughs> yeah, it's a 90, 97. <laughs> OK. And uh, good. Perfect. So that should be now calculating the calories you are burning. And I'm just going to print it in the console. Uh, and I'm going to add a new, uh, because I'm using this as a data frame, DF is a data frame. I'm going to add a new column, which will be cal from calories. Uh, and as you see, I'm passing there the calories burned. And now that I have that new column, I'm passing the data frame to the output topic. So you see, I picked the data from the input topic. I did a calculation of the calories. I added a new column with those calories and I output it, that data frame into the next topic. Good. I think I'm good to go. I'm going to deploy this. Uh, I'm going to deploy this. This doesn't need much power. So yeah, that is building. So I'm going to pass the screen back to you, Thomas. I've done my transformation. Uh, that should be working. Let's put that somewhere. Let's do something with those calories. Cool. Uh, thank you, Javi. So, I mean, what, what Javi just created, he, he, he created a pipeline that uh, happened in just in memory. So we, we, we use the database to do analysis, to look at the histograms, etc. But then we move a database to the side and, and build everything in memory. So we don't have to stress uh, our database uh, to do such a thing. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen again. Hopefully it's going to work. Um, uh, can you tell me if you can see my screen? Yes. Cool. So um, no, hold on, Thomas. We, <laughs> we are actually seeing the screen in YouTube. Uh, OK, so let's. Try. Let's try this one. Uh, yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. cool. So, um, so now we're getting this, uh, in this uh, calories um, from this service. So if I, if I uh, look at the output here um, and look at the Actually, we don't even need to use this. We can just see these logs uh, that it's working. And we can go to data here and check the output. And if I click on one of the messages, I see that there's a cow. And this is what I'm looking for. Um, so let's edit my in-memory view that I have created before. And actually, let's use the calories instead. So I'm, I'm going to use here a cow. Cow. And, cow. and because it's a bit different data that was before, I'm going to bump up a version of our state so we don't mix G-force and heart rate. It's really something else. So let's bump this up to 1.1. So just to explain what I'm doing here, um, our state has a version, so you have a chance to reset it if you don't want to use the previous one. So when you, when you change the version of your storage version, it will basically wipe out everything you have persisted before and start from scratch. Now, um, this should work. Let's, let's give it a go. And actually, it will not work because I have to change input and output. So are you sending it to this one, Javi? Calories? Yes, yes. Actually, do you want to sh show that in the slide so that people know what you are doing here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so going back here, moving a bit forward because we are now here. So what we're going to do um, is that we're going to do this swap. So our in-memory view will stop listening to G, G total and start listening to calories. 
And so then we, we are able to basically uh, reconnect our dashboard to this new, um, new information, new, new data. So um, I'm going to go to listen to this new topic. And I'm going to output it to different topic, calories view. Um, press save and give it a try. Amazing. So uh, that's working. And I'm just going to stop this and give it a version v1, actually v2, because we already have a v1. And going back to um, here and deploying this to um, as a service with one CPU and enabling the state. Cool, so this is now being built. And I'm going back to our real-time dashboard. And um, again, this is now needs to connect to a different topic, which is gonna be called a calories view. And again, different data, different state. Um, I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run it. So I have to change another thing here, which is gonna be um, um, type stream ID and give it a go. Uh, it was too much. <laughs> Cool, so this is now working. And I did one change from the previous um, example when we were calculating a G forces. Now I'm, I'm grouping this by session rather than rider because we had a lot of sessions um, in the last 24 hours when we were playing with this with Javi. And um, we want to really show all the sessions in the dashboard. And if I go now to our dashboard, there we are. and Nice. Uh, this is this is now accumulating the calories, and if we would start doing exercises now, uh, at the end of that session we would get a a nice um, uh, calories burn. So this yeah. this real time dashboard is nothing really complicated, but it's just an example how you can consume this data that have been built in application website or simply in in under the application. And how you can do that without using database and uh, build scalable, efficient uh, product on top of data and how to bring microservice approach to uh, building data pipelines, uh, which is kind of a software engineering thing, but it's actually have a point and it's, uh, it has a lot of advantages. Uh, so that's why we're doing it here. Uh, so I hope you, you like it and if you have any questions or something is not clear, um, just ask uh, on the chat. And uh, yeah, that's that's all for from us. Uh, the last bit is that if you want to try it by yourself, uh, we have this QR code with extra credits, and um, you can basically follow all we did today from start to end. Use our library to do that, and. Um, if you don't have an a Android phone or, or heart rate, just send any, any sample data from our library and use that to, to build this product uh, for yourself. And we have many, many um, tutorials and things people can try. And also just want to let people know that that amount of credits is actually pretty amazing. Uh, I guess they can build a lot, <laughs> basically anything they can think of uh, without um, finishing them. So yeah, uh, please feel free to to try. Um, I guess Thomas, we should say goodbye now. Yeah. So thank you okay. very much.
and 